As a coach, I am always making distinctions that open up avenues for my clients to retrieve lost power. You know, it's so fun to witness their aha moments and when they feel that surge of power and motivation returning. You know, if you're not familiar with the term collapsed distinction, it refers to what coach Lisa Danley describes as confusion that happens when the boundary between two separate ideas get combined and they are perceived to be the same thing. Ever had that happen? I love coaching my clients to make distinctions and specifically how to make them for their lives. You know, we find that the right distinction can have a profound impact on the client's perspective, evoking clarity and while empowering new choices and transformation. Distinctions are intellectually stimulating and they contribute to my own expanding self-awareness. The most common thread among successful business people is their ability to make distinctions. I see it in all of my friends who are successful coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs. Hi, I'm Coach Vince Morales, and thank you for joining me today on Distinctions in Motion. I'll be right back after this announcement. Hi and welcome back. I have a question. Why is it you, me, and everyone else gets into a stuck pattern from time to time? Before you answer that question, consider what Tony Robbins points out, that intelligence is the measure of the number and quality of distinctions that you have in a given situation. So the answer is very simple. People often get into stuck patterns because of a lack of distinctions. Do you know this ability to make distinctions also marks our level of emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence, and conversation intelligence, along with our relationship intelligence? Professor Cabrera, whose quote we cited earlier, says, Distinctions are not things, but negotiated boundaries between ideas and things. A boundary between the identity and other that occurs fractally which means across scale but in the same pattern. The same skill in distinction making is to ensure that you and others are not calling the same thing by different terms or alternatively calling different things by the same terms. When we make an identity, we automatically create a boundary that marginalizes the other. Sometimes this marginalization is trivial, but sometimes it is egregious. Distinction making isn't as much about labels, terminology, and semantics as it is about meaning and concepts. If we use different words to mean the same thing but are aware of it, that's not as much of a problem as using the same words and meaning different things or using different words and meaning the same thing but not knowing about it. Did that kind of catch you? It really is about awareness of shared meaning rather than semantics and terminology. It is also about seeing the other when making distinctions or seeing the noise as a potential signal. 
Imagine a black dot on a piece of paper. Now, we can make the distinction to look at the black dot. But remember, it's about boundaries. It is a black dot giving meaning, but as well as the surrounding paper around the black dot. Making distinctions is seeing the boundary difference and noise space in between. It's like making the distinction between acceptance versus forgiveness versus release. Self-discipline versus self-control versus self-mastery. It's making the distinction between power versus strength, dream versus vision, expectation versus demand. It's innocence versus immaturity, skill versus talent. It's self-worth versus self-esteem, kindness and love versus people pleasing. So the distinction making rule can be complex, but the big takeaway is that when we see something, we also tend to miss something else. As Professor Cabrera reminds us, distinction rule is designed to provoke thought, not provide an answer. I hope this helped you to begin to understand distinctions on a very basic level. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Distinctions in Motion. See you next time.